All right, so today we're diving into YK11. Oh, yeah, this should be good. This one's got everyone talking about crazy muscle gains. Yeah, it's really got some buzz going on. People keep asking us about it. So we dug into the research, uh, looked at what people are saying online. Yeah, should be interesting. And let me tell you, it's a wild ride. Wild is a good word for it. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about something that could, like, change the game for muscle growth totally like push it way beyond what we thought was possible like breaking through barriers right but and this is a big but always a but we're still early days you know mm. trying to figure out exactly what we're dealing with here yeah it's like we found this powerful engine powerful engine i like that but the instructions are in a language we don't understand exactly we've got these scientific papers breaking down yk11 like down to the cells mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you've got these firsthand accounts from bodybuilders online. Yeah, and they're saying some pretty wild stuff. It's both exciting and a little scary. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's that mix of hard science and then those personal stories that makes this deep dive so interesting. Totally agree. So let's start with what we know what the research says. YK11, it's classified as a steroidal SARM. Okay. Which is unusual. Yeah, break that down for me, because I thought SARMs were supposed to be different from steroids. Right. They're supposed to target those androgen receptors without all the nasty side effects. Right, exactly. But YK11 is different. So it's both. It's like a hybrid. Steroidal SARM, that's wild. Yeah, see, most SARMs, they're non-steroidal. But YK11's structure actually looks a lot like testosterone and DHT. Oh, wow, so it's got that steroidal backbone. Exactly, so it's kind of got the split personality, you know? Interesting. Like, on one hand, it's acting like a SARM binding to those androgen receptors, mm -hmm. but then it's like this extra gear thanks to its steroidal structure. So it's like a supercharged SARM. That's one way to put it. But how does that actually play out in the body? That's where things get really interesting. YK11 seems to be what's called a partial agonist of the androgen receptor. A partial agonist. Okay, I'm going to need you to break that down. Right, so that means it doesn't fully activate those receptors the way something like testosterone would. Okay. Think of it like dimming the lights instead of flicking the switch completely off. Ah, okay. So you're still getting some of the effects, just not all of them. Exactly. And that's the potential here, you see. Because some researchers think that this partial activation could be the key to getting muscle growth yeah. without triggering all those androgenic side effects, mm. the ones you'd normally expect from like straight testosterone or DHT. Okay, so that's huge <laughs> if it actually works that way. But speaking of DHT, you see, yeah, YK Alvin's structure is similar, right? Yeah. Is that where this whole myostatin thing comes in? You're way ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the most exciting areas of research with YK11. So myostatin, it's this protein that basically limits muscle growth. Right. It's like your body's saying, all right, that's enough muscle for you. Exactly like a genetic muscle limiter. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And here's the thing. Some early research is suggesting that YK11 might be able to release that break. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. By increasing the production of another protein called folostatin. Folostatin. And folostatin actually inhibits myostatin. So it's like a double negative. Exactly. It's like telling the limiter to stop limiting. Wow. Which means you could potentially unlock even greater muscle growth than we've ever seen before. So YK11 could be like the key to unlocking this whole other level of muscle building. That's incredible. But how does it actually work? How does folostatin block myostatin. So YK11 could be like the key to unlocking this whole other level of muscle building. It really could be groundbreaking stuff. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. But how does it actually work? How does folostatin block myostatin? It's pretty fascinating, right? Like imagine just overriding your body's natural limits. Like hacking your own DNA. Exactly. So basically myostatin usually latches onto certain cells. Mm -hmm. And it's like delivering the signal that says, stop growing. You've had enough muscle for one lifetime. Exactly. But folostatin, what it does is it swoops in. Like a bodyguard. Yeah. And it binds to myostatin itself. Oh, wow. So it's blocking the signal. Exactly. It's like putting a gag on the muscle police. That's a great way to put it. I like that. And the potential here is huge. Like, think beyond just bodybuilding. Right, because if this works the way it seems to... It could be revolutionary for treating muscle-wasting diseases, too. Okay, now that's what I call a plot twist. <laughs> but, okay, we have to talk about the side effects. Mm. Because we've got these anecdotal reports from people who actually used YK11. Right. And they're saying some things that are a little worrying. Yeah, we definitely need to talk about that. I mean, it's like with any powerful tool, 
Hmm. There's always a potential for downsides. Exactly. There's always a catch. And because this is all so new, we don't really know the full extent of those risks yet. And a lot of the side effects that people are reporting, they kind of sound like the ones you hear about with DHD. Right. Which makes sense because you said their structures are similar. Yeah, exactly. We're talking about things like hair loss. Mm -hmm. Especially for guys who are already prone to it. Right. If you've got that gene, watch out. Yeah. And then there's the potential for joint and tendon issues. Yeah. And those joint issues are really interesting. What have you heard about that? So one user described it as like feeling close to snapping something. Oh, wow. And this was without even lifting heavy weights. So just everyday movements were painful. It seems like it. Wow. That's scary. Yeah. It suggests that YK11 might be affecting tendons differently than other compounds. Now that's a concern. Because yeah. we need our tendons for everything. Exactly. They're like the unsung heroes of our bodies. Totally. They don't get enough credit. No, they don't. And without more research, long-term studies, mm -hmm. it's impossible to say what the long-term impact on tendon health might be. Right. So it's like walking a tightrope without a safety net. You might make it to the other side. Right. But it's definitely a risky move. And that's why it's so important to be really careful with YK11. Honestly, with any experimental compound. Absolutely. You've got to do your research. 100%. Speaking of research, let's talk dosages. Mm. One thing that really stood out from those anecdotal accounts mm. was just how many different ways people are using YK11. Yeah, it's all over the map. Some people are microdosing it. Mm -hmm. Others are using it like a pre-workout. Right. And then there are those experimenting with like nanoforms. Yeah. It's a free-for-all out there. It really is. And that's part of the problem. Without any established protocols, people are basically experimenting on themselves. Which is terrifying. It can be incredibly risky. It's like trying to bake a cake without a recipe. You might get lucky. Right. Or you might end up with a complete disaster. Exactly. And what's even more concerning is that some people are reporting serious side effects. Right. Even at lower doses. Yeah. And that just highlights how individual responses to YK11 can be so different. Mm. Genetics body composition, even your training intensity. Right. All those factors can play a role. It all influences how your body reacts to this compound. So what might be totally fine for one person could be dangerous for someone else. Exactly. And that's why we can't stress enough how important it is to start low, go slow, and listen to your body. If something feels off. Trust your instincts. It probably is. Yeah, better safe than sorry. So we've got this potential for incredible muscle growth. But then we've also got these big question marks about long-term side effects. Right. And it seems like most of what we know about that is coming from anecdotal reports. Yeah, which, as we've said, can be unreliable. Exactly. Are there any studies looking at the long-term effects of YK11? That's a thing. There really aren't. At least not any long-term human studies that I'm aware of. So we're basically in the dark when it comes to those long-term impacts. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Okay, so anyone who says they know what the long-term effects are is just guessing at this point. Exactly. It's all speculation. That makes this whole thing even more complicated. It really does. Because we have this potential for amazing results, mm -hmm. but then also this huge unknown in terms of the risks. It's a balancing act for sure. It's like we're at the edge of uncharted territory. I like that analogy. Right. It's exciting, but also kind of scary. For sure. And this is where personal responsibility comes in. Absolutely. People need to understand that they're basically the guinea pigs here. Right. There's no way around that. If you're going to experiment with this stuff, you have to be cautious. Couldn't agree more. Anyone even thinking about trying YK11 needs to do their research. 100%. Talk to a medical professional. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, listen to their body. Yeah. If something feels off, it probably is. Exactly. This isn't like taking a supplement that's been around for decades. Right. This is cutting edge stuff. We're talking about potentially altering the way our bodies build muscle. And with that comes a lot of unknowns. Well said. <laughs> All right. So to wrap things up, we've taken a deep dive into the world of YK11. It's been quite a journey. We've talked about the science behind it. The potential benefits, the risks. The anecdotal reports, the lack of long-term studies. All the good stuff. And remember, this is just the starting point. Right. There's always more to learn. If you're thinking about trying YK11, do your research, talk to a doctor, and be careful. Your health is your responsibility. Absolutely. All right. That's it for today. Until next time, stay curious and stay informed.